We are back live with another one. Everyone hates Tesla. And, you know, Tesla is going to increase by 190K percent. Maybe, possibly, we don't know. For sure, we'll go through this video. And we're at the last leg of the video. And we're going to go through the financials. People are going to be like, what's with the finances, bro? You're talking a lot of smack, okay? Well, we want to see the finances. And also, I'm going to remind you that if you check out the catalog, you'll see me go through the factories. You'll see us actually explore the construction phase of the factories. You'll see us actually sit down with the project or the factory manager and actually get from him what they're doing, how they're cutting costs and expenses. I mean, come on, an investor's day, we sit up there and went through the video and saw the master plan of how they're going to create a new assembly line. So it's like, man, this is the due diligence that you need to do about a particular company in order to say, how do I define the definition between hype and right? And we're digging through the details to get what's right. A lot of people are just going to be like, yo, you're listening to the hype. You're a fanboy. And it's like, nah, you want to talk about the factories? You want to talk about the mega packs? You want to talk about how they actually changed up this battery technology and increased the efficiency? Do you want to talk about the heat pump? Do you want to talk about the powertrain? Do you want to talk about the new assembly line? Do you want to talk about the particular part when we actually send the car off to get sprayed and painted and how we've been able to reduce the cost? You want to talk about the casting machine? You want to talk about the mega caps? You want to talk about the factory over here and over there in Shanghai? You want to talk about the expansion of the mega factory? What do you want to talk about? Because I can walk it like I talk it. So a fan, yeah, you're damn right. I know the details, just like a fan knows how many endings, when somebody was drafted, when they're going to actually be able to hit, what's their best batting hit, what's their best shooting percentage. We know all that. So what are you going to do? As a hater, you should be able to produce counter arguments of why there's another competitor that's better at this. Because when you can't, that's when you're looking vastly stupid, my man. Let's get down to the financials. Financial comparison, Tesla, Apple, and Amazon. Winston insisted on coming along. He's got a nose for sniffing out good numbers. But first stop, market cap. Tesla's current market cap sits at a cool $640 billion. Now let's wind back the clock to 2007 for Apple. Just as they were launching the iPhone, adjusted for inflation, Apple's market cap then would be about $220 billion in today's money. So before they launched the iPhone, $220 billion. Right. So you're like, wow, that's before a big event. OK. And then, of course, Tesla's 600. So that's more. Right. And they've launched a couple of products. OK, let's see. But Amazon, we're traveling back to 2006 when they launched AWS. Their inflation adjusted market cap, a mere 23 billion. So 23 billion only for Amazon when they launched, launched AWS. That's ridiculous. So Tesla's already valued significantly higher than Apple or Amazon. Where it see, so Tesla's already valued significantly higher but let's see it's a similarly transformative stage so this is the end of the story was it all a complete waste of time Not quite let's talk revenue tesla brought in a whopping 96 billion last year now let's compare that to our time traveling friends apple's revenue in 2007 again always in plus adjusted for inflation would be 36 billion 36 billion to our 96 billion this is revenue so apple was at 220 only at 36 when we're at 96 Amazon, 17 billion. 17 billion for Amazon before AWS, but they had a fairly low market cap. So, okay. Tesla is not just playing in the big leagues, they're rewriting the rule book. But remember, past performance doesn't, of course, guarantee future results. But Tesla's present revenue is a significant multiple of what Apple and Amazon were at their kind of trans transformative moments. Yeah, so their transformative moments, our revenue, is much higher, triple what theirs were at their transformative moments. So if I was to say the same thing, let's go back in time. And if I was to say the same thing about Amazon, you could say, I'm crazy. Look at their revenue. I'm like, man, what? Amazon, they're only like 20 billion. Well, you, you're going crazy right now. You're talking stupid. I say it about Apple. You could have said the same thing. Like, what? You're stupid. Do you see their revenue? They're only like 30, 36 billion right now. But here goes Tesla touching 100 billion, and I still must be an idiot, right? Prior to the transformative phase. I don't think the car was the transformative phase, excuse me, just like 
you know, the books were transformative to an extent. And just like the actual computers were at Apple for an extent. But once we came out with the iPhone and then the services, or once we came out with retail across the board or the actual AWS, it was game over. And that's what I'm saying the next phase of Tesla is. EVs, cool. Energy, Optimus robot, and then you could sprinkle in full self-driving. Sprinkle that in as a bonus. So let's look at the stock performance since IPO. Tesla stock has grown by about 16,000% since its 2010 IPO. Impressive, right? Well, Apple stock has grown by about 190,000%. See? So Apple's grown a lot more since 1980. Since it's a 1980 IPO. And Amazon has skyrocketed by 192,000% since its 1997 IPO. So, what does this mean for Tesla's future potential? Well, let's try to be a bit more speculative here. Consider this Tesla isn't just. So, wait, hold on, stop it. So, for those who say, well, the value has gone to a ridiculous amount, it makes no sense. We made more money than them prior to their actual increase, large increase in growth. And on top of that, we have way better products going into the future. Like, come on, Optimus Robot, the market cap for that, the TAM for that is ridiculous. The total market value is ridiculous, all right? Now, energy, same thing. And especially, it's about time for that to be revolutionized and revised. There's new inventions that need to be had in the energy department. But this is funny, too. People who hate on Tesla know nothing about our energy grid. Like, they don't even understand how they get energy to their own house, let alone how essential these battery packs will be, these mega packs. But that's neither here nor there. The massive amounts of growth is yet to happen. It's not just a car company. They're positioning themselves at the intersection of multiple high growth industries, electric vehicles, energy storage, solar power, artificial intelligence, a robot for everybody. And we know that just the EV market is expected to grow 29% a year. We know the energy storage market is expected to reach. Mommy, where are we going to sit? And, and let me say this. Car? Let me say this at the end of the day. When you're actually looking at things like Tesla, let's go ahead and give them EVs only now. And energy. Energy generated a good amount, around 30% of our profit. Now, it was around almost 10% of our revenue, but almost about 30% of our profit because the margins are higher on the energy department, especially for storage. And imagine once we ramp, this is things while everything is still ramping and being scaled up, that things are going to be a little bit more expensive. So in the future, when we end up ramping, it's going to get ridiculous. But at least we could put energy on the board now because there's revenue there. And a good, not significant, but something that it says, okay, this is not la la lane. You're not, you guys aren't just giving us gas and saying they might do this, they might do this, like artificial intelligence and robots. They have yet to generate revenue to the extent that the energy department did. So let's let's talk turkey. And talking turkey means let's talk numbers. And the AI market, 1.8 trillion by 2030. So Tesla's approach puts them in a unique position to capitalize on all of these growing markets. So Tesla's current revenue of 96 billion could be just a fraction. It definitely is just a fraction of the addressable market. The global automotive market alone is worth trillions. If Tesla can just capture a significant share of the car market and expand into energy and autonomous services, let alone robots, their revenue could still grow many, many times over. Of course, no growth is guaranteed. They're going to face challenges, competition, scaling, development issues, all kinds of stuff. But if Tesla can execute on this vision, the potential upside is enormous. And if you compare it to the Amazon and Apple moves, another 10x doesn't seem that far-fetched. So while Tesla's current valuation might seem high compared to its current revenues, when we consider the size of the markets they're addressing and their potential for disruption, we might just be in the early chapters of a much, much longer growth story. So is Tesla still early in its trajectory? The answer isn't, of course, black and white. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Put it down below in the, in the comments. Is it early or is it late? Well, the company's current valuation does price in some significant future growth. Yet when we consider the sheer size of the market that Tesla is targeting and actually going to create, the potential is mind-boggling, mind-bending. If you are intrigued by companies like Tesla and you want to learn how to... Of course we're intrigued by companies like Tesla. 
Fair use. Much respect to this guy. He does great. Flex and friends. He does great analysis across the board. But once I saw that, guys, I was like, I'm going to have to produce it. I'm going to have to show up and sh show up and show out and show you guys what we're doing. And he even talked about the robots. The robots in the addressable market for Optimus is ridiculous. 30 trillion for the labor market. Now, of course, let's just say it's 5 trillion. Right. And let's say that Tesla only gets about 10 percent of that five trillion. That's a gross, gross, gross underestimation. That's a ridiculous underestimation. But let's just go with it because let me be conservative. But when it comes down to that Optimus robot. You guys really don't think Elon can pull it off. You don't think he can make it happen. Now, I wish, I wish I would have brought up the video where this robot was actually in the factory. We already have the factories. So when he throws the robot in the factories, we already got the factories. Like, right? It's not like other companies who got to create these robots and they don't have a factory, plus they don't know how to scale. So even if they actually figure it out, they still don't know how to scale. We do. Hmm. Think about that. But I guess. We're going to sleep on a guy that makes things happen like this. We're not going to believe he can do it. Right? Y'all really don't believe this guy can do it? Let me, let me also give you another visual real quick before we head out. Sleeping on this guy is crazy. Guys, I'll see you in the next one. All right? Like, share, subscribe, support the channel and hit that notification bell and then also watch this rocket land rocket man elon musk was as smooth as I've seen it. Uh, we had phenomenal shots all the way through the landing burn. You heard the sonic booms. This old night. So, the, so from all the way up here. Gas, which helps with attitude control. And then the booster back. Page one. Uh, that was as smooth as I've seen.